God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into online service of Life Purpose Church. We want to say a very special thank you for allowing me and Michaela, you know, to do service in your home. We're very blessed and encouraged with the, what the Lord is doing on our lives. We always want to spread God's heart through the scriptures, and we want to say a very special thank you. Let's go ahead and go into a word of prayer before we start the, today's service. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness. Father, we fall every day, but yet you, Lord, we are covered by the Lord, we will repent in our hearts. Jesus, we put this service in your hand. We want this service to impact many, many people who deal with this on social media. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. I'm, I'm still excited, you know, excited. I'm still, you know, with the atmosphere of a beautiful worship. You know, last week, you know, we have a beautiful service. We have um, a dolly. Her brother Carlo, we have Manny, Jermaine, Rosie, uh, our daddy's mom, and it was just such a beautiful service. Sabrina, Fidel, and man, I, man, I just felt so encouraged to see everybody coming together to just to worship the Lord. And thank you to Jermaine Moreno, such a beautiful message what Jermaine has shared as well. And I want to give you guys some update what's going to happen uh, throughout the month of March. Excuse me, I'm about to speak. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh man. Um, in in March we're gonna have a itinerary. We're gonna start a new series on March third. Come follow me. The words of Jesus. Come follow me. We are gonna have a guest speaker later on in March seventeenth, and we are we are gonna have an Easter service on March thirty first as well. We are looking for help, volunteers. Uh, as you guys know, today scripture reading we have Michaela that's gonna be doing the scripture reading. How are you doing today, Michaela? Man, Michaela, I'm just so excited, you know, just three years ago from 2020, you're in middle school, here you are, high school, you know, stepping into something greater, man. I'm very proud of you for all your accomplishments. Thank you. As you guys know, we're going to close our sermon series today on, excuse me, we're going to close our sermon series um, today. Uh, we've been talking about finding love. We've been going over from scripture on finding love. We talk about on finding love, um, finding the right person to marry. And of course, we, 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 we talk about the scriptures, what person, a wife or a husband you should marry. Now, we know the Bible doesn't talk about boyfriend or girlfriend, but it does talk about courtship. The Bible doesn't talk about appearances. Try to find a beautiful girlfriend or have a boyfriend, doesn't talk about that. But the, the, but the scripture will guide you to marry the right person. Of course, in the very first sermon theory, I talk about um, part one, uh, we, we talk about love as well, that love is good medicine, we, we talk about love from the scripture, and uh, today we're going to close our message series, we're going to talk about unconditional love, uh, part four as well, and thank you so much everyone, I know we've been getting more viewers on YouTube, our, our subscribers getting higher on Instagram and Facebook, and I want to say thank you so much. For your faithfulness to the Lord. I know it's been my desire and my dream to pastor my own church in the future. But I know um, I'm, I'm the Lord continue to work in my heart as well. So let's go into our first scripture reading. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 to 5. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without, without blame before him in love, having predestined us to 
the adop adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, did you guys know love is such a beautiful word in the Bible? You see love all over the Bible. You see love in John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one in this who lay down his life for his friend. You see it for John 4, 18, a perfect love cast out fear. Love is, is such a medicine. See, a lot of times we look at love as a feeling. We look, we look at love as an emotion. But in reality, love is something that you do. It's not, it's not how you feel. See, I can love, you know, my, my hobbies, my interests, and what I do. But, you know, love is a heart it, to pursue something greater in your life. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, what, what Michaela was talking about, it's the, it's the beginning, the foundation, before the stars, before the planet, before all of earth was created. God loves you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1, 5 that he, he formed you in your mother's womb. You're in your mother's womb. He loves you. He, you already have a destiny and you already have a purpose in life. Because in the beginning, see, before it was darkness, it was just nothing. But the Spirit of God said, let there be light and there was light because we've been adopted into the family of Christ Jesus. And let's go ahead and continue. Five, unconditional love by God. We'll go to point number one. Point number one is the first purpose of my life is to be loved by God. Let's go to Psalm 139, verse one. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Meaning that in Psalm 139, verse 14, I am wonderfully and fearfully made he knows you. He even knows all the hairs in your head. That's kind of hard, though. But God knows you. He, he, he orchestrates a plan in your life. He orchestrates something greater for you. And for, for you can have fulfillment and a desire in your life. And let's go ahead and continue. My first calling is to have a relationship with Jesus. Let's go to Romans 1 7. So all who are in Rome believe of God called to be saved. We need to Grace be saved. To you, oh. Go ahead. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember, to come to Jesus, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised from the dead and you are saved. Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 5, 8, for God who demonstrates his great love towards us when we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's why in, in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world. That's what we talk about in Ephesians chapter 1, Michaela. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Meaning that when we come to Jesus to as the Lord and Savior, you are saved. Your name will be in the land book of life. And let's go ahead and continue. That relationship that God created for you is to be his son and daughter. To be his son and daughter. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, the greatest he than you is in the world. Jesus loves you unconditionally. Jesus has a plan and a purpose for your life. See, your story is a story that God is unfolding. See, when God's writing your story. That's why in Psalm 139, verse 1, that He knows you, you search to Him as well. And let's go to Acts 17, 27, 28. So that they should He is not far from each one of us, for in Him we live and move on, have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also His offspring. Amen. In John chapter 8, verse 32, you should know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 9, 5, that's the line of the world, on the line of the world, because he loves you. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, you call upon him, and he'll answer you and show you some great and mighty things. 
when, when you walk with Jesus, if maybe you're a teenager and you're a middle school, you're a young adult in your 30, 40, or 50, it's not too late, to come to the cross of Jesus so you can repent and so you can be saved to spend eternity in heaven. Do you want to go to heaven, Michaela? Yes. All you have to do is follow Jesus, follow the scriptures, and have a relationship with Jesus. And let's go to First John chapter 3, verse 1. should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Awesome. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 and 20. Amen. You know, I like that. Can you read verse 20 again, Ephesians chapter 3? Giving thanks always for all, all things to God the Father in the, same, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, when you go to church, or it may be in your room right now, it's always good to give God thanks, to give, to give God praise, to give Jesus the honor and glory in all that we do in life. Now, this is uh, the sad truth. Life is short. You know, we, we may be here one day and be gone the next day. That's why we need to set our eyes on eternity. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1, that we set our mind above and other things in this world. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, that our citizenship does not belong here. We belong in heaven with Jesus. Because when, when you come to Jesus, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come to me all the over weary, heavy burden, and I'll give you rest. Jesus will give you that rest. She even want to give you that peace, John 14, 27, that peace that I leave with you. Not with the world, give it my peace. Let not your heart be troubled, not let it be afraid. John 14, verse 2, that my father's help is many mentioned. John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one that will go by me as a proof of father, which is Jesus. Man, Michaela, I hope one day you'll be shooting Bible scriptures. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Yeah, so we walk by faith and not by sight because we've been justified by, by, by faith with confidence. We don't need to worry. So if, if you know in your heart that Jesus loves you according to Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, he's knocking in the door of your heart. Jesus is knocking you. We let him into your heart knowing that you're going to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. And we'll go to our next scripture. Okay, so here's point number two. I have ability to bring my knees to God. I have ability. Let's go to Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4.16? Yes. Then See, when you come to know Jesus, we have boldness. We have confidence to, to approach him. We can talk to God about our needs 24-7. Can you imagine that, um, like, a, I don't know, the president of the United States, imagine a kid, one, a daughter or son, want to talk to President George Bush. Maybe a George Bush daughter want to talk to George Bush. And you know what? The, the George Bush, the president of the United States, will pop everybody to talk to his daughter, Laura or Barbara, just like God. But no, we have access to talk to God with boldness, to, to come to him with our needs and our prayers. And let's go ahead and continue with point number three. I have peace in 
the myth of, of my trusty fascist. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpass, surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart, your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Now, I want to teach you something, Michaela. I don't know how, well, I know high school nowadays, they're just surrounded by gospel, mm -hmm. profanity. Yeah. You're surrounded by negative, you know, a lot of negativity. This is why, as a Christian, a follower of Jesus, you need to have peace in your heart when you go through circumstances, when you go through, you know, drama of life. Yes, there are going to be uh, students at school, they might talk bad about you, they might judge you, they might embarrass you, or this is where uh, we need to be firm in our faith. We need to, to take and uh, to trust Jesus. The Bible says in Joshua 1.9, be strong, be courageous. Don't dismay yourself. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I understand high school and middle school today because there's a lot of, you know, the negativity because of social media, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know that you, um, uh, when somebody's doing something bad at school, they can easily take out your phone and start filming you? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I, you know, if, if I'm very careful, even I'm, I'm, I'm at Nikki Rowe High School or Fox Middle School, I myself need to be careful as well, you know, because I know, that's why we need to reflect Jesus 24-7. And let's go ahead and continue. Let's go to Romans 8:28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the, are the called according to His purpose. Amen. That's why that's the scripture in our church ministry that you are called according to his purpose. When Jesus has a purpose for your life, you know, you may be you may be young right now, you're a teenager in high school or middle school, but yet the Lord has a purpose for your life. I'm gonna give you my story, Michaela. I didn't find Jesus when I was in Nicaragua High School when I was seventeen years old. Man, I, I'm glad I took a step of faith to walk with Jesus because when I was in high school, I I, I, I was getting in trouble, to be honest with you. I used to, I skipped classes. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. But you know, I'm glad the Lord worked in my heart. You know, I, I actually skipped one class on May 22nd, 2007, to go out 17 years in my life. That's kind of funny though, right? I'm sorry? Oh, uh, I said okay. Well, okay, yeah. I skipped one class so I can go out 17 years in my heart in high school. Uh, Let's go to, I believe we're on point number four, finding courage. First John 4, 16, I mean 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment, but he fears, he who fears has not been made perfect in love. There you go. Perfect love will cast out fear. And life, you know, it's going to be scary, Michaela. I know you're not there yet, but when you finish high school, when you step into the real world, when you go to a career, college, or maybe you're 21, 22 years old, it will be scary because you're learning to be adjusted in the real world. This is when you need to be independent. This is when you need to, to have friends that care about you because life, you can't do life alone without friends. Mm -hmm. And you know, let's go ahead and finish the message let's go, let's go to first john 4 12. no one has seen god at any time if we would love one another god acted in us and his love has been perfect in us amen but it's true nobody never seen god well i know moses seen god because he saw the bad part in the book of exodus but nobody we love one another that God's love will live in our hearts. For example, I'll, I'll give you an example, Michaela. Um, maybe if, if, you, if you show a random act of kindness, that's loving God. Maybe if you if you do something nice or you care about somebody, that's showing God's love in your heart as well because find people that you know is going to help you, is going to take care of you. So Peter 5, 7 says, that cast all your cares upon him for he cares about you. And let's go continue with point number five. Love never fails. 
The floor of Romans 8.37 Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Always remember, as we get ready to close this message today, unconditional love. Love is something that you do, it's not a feeling. When, when God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, because I was an act of love, an act of courage, because love never fails. And I believe that today, as we close our sermon series on finding love, I hope that you can find love through Jesus Christ. If you can find love and purpose with him to get redemption, to reconcile your relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're here today, you're falling away from your faith, you walk away from church, but you're here today with an opportunity for you to come to know Jesus, to believe that your name's written in the Lamb Book of Life, and I believe that you can do all things with Christ to give you strength. Let's go ahead and uh, repeat a prayer after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I, I come to you. I come to you. Jesus, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you to come into my heart. To come into my heart. To be the Lord. To be the Lord. Savior of my life. Savior of my life. And I believe. And I believe that my name. My name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Is written in the Book of Life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Michaela. Welcome to the Kingdom family. You just affected Jesus in your heart. Thank you. Always remember this day on February 25th, 2024, that you accepted Jesus in your heart at 15 years old. Awesome. Praise the Lord. The next step, you need to get you baptized. <laughs> well, have you been baptized? No. Mm. I'll give up the next step for you to get baptized. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in the service. Oh, we're, we, we're, we're blessed that Michaela came to know Jesus. So now it's going to be a process for her to follow her desire, her dreams, to, to be a registered nurse. We're going to believe in you, Michaela, all step of the way. And let's go ahead and, and, and close prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. I believe that you rejoice in heaven. The angels are shouting that, that your beautiful princess is in heaven. Affected Jesus, Lord. And I know, Lord, that Michaela has a desire and a dream to walk with you. Thank you, Lord, that we know that you can do great things in Michaela's heart. And I declare in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you, Michaela. Thank you so much for tuning in to our online service. And I appreciate your help. And you have a wonderful week at school. You too. Thank you. All right, you take care then. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Awesome. Well, God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to our online service. Join us, guys, on March 3rd. But we are going to start a new series called Come Follow Me. Well, take care and have a wonderful evening.